Good evening all, and I'm having another look at this oscilloscope that Banggood sent to me. It's a £15 oscilloscope, really cheap. It would be really good if it worked. Got a completely blank screen. And last time I was concerned that I wasn't getting a signal called VGen, which generates the negative analog voltage. Well, now I am, and you can see it there on the scope. So on the circuit diagram, VGen is here. Now this comes directly out of the microcontroller and should be a pulse chain or train. And it is, I've now got that. Um, it goes into, uh, through this resistor capacitor into an NPN transistor, PNP transistor. There's an inductor here and a Schottky diode. And then it comes out at uh, minus 8.1 volts and is regulated by a negative 7905 regulator down to minus 5 volts. Now, because I now have this pulse train, I know that the microcontroller part of this is working. There's just something in this circuit that's not working. Uh, some people have said they've had problems with this 1 milli Henry inductor. Mine has a static resistance of 5 ohms, so I'm not sure whether that's it. But this should be relatively easy to fault find. The important thing is I'm getting this pulse train. So with the scope set to uh, 50 microseconds per division, we're getting, what is this, about 10 kilohertz, is it? No, 20 kilohertz. If that was 100 microseconds, it would be 10 kilohertz, wouldn't it? So 50 microseconds, 20 kilohertz waveform. Uh, it seems to be have quite a low mark space ratio. It's not very long on the high. It's much longer on the low. But this is the sort of pulse train I was looking for to generate that negative analog voltage. Now I know I have it, that circuitry should be relatively easy to fault find. I think where I'd been fooled is that when the LCD is not on the board, this pulse chain isn't there either. And it's very similar actually to the one at the other end of the board. Uh, let me just lift this up. This test point here, the one kilohertz, 3.3 volts, that's not there either uh, when the LCD is not in place. And it's obvious that the microcontroller says, well, I haven't got an LCD, so I'm not going to bother to turn on the one kilohertz test signal. And I'm also not going to bother to turn on this VGen for gen generating the negative analog voltage. A peculiar decision, but that's how it works. Um, now that I've attached this piece of wire to the relevant part of the circuit, I can see that VGen is actually there. So now the question is, why isn't this LCD working? And what I wanted to do was actually scope all of the data lines on this LCD, all of the control lines to see whether I'm getting digital data on those lines. And something very interesting has emerged. So I've attached the scope to the LCD's uh, pin 24 there. You can see 20, 22, 24. And you can see on the circuit diagram, uh, pin 24 is actually DB1. Now DB0 is pin 23, it's not quite as easy to get to because it's on the left-hand row of pins. But I'm going to have a look at uh, DB1, DB3, DB5 and DB7, and then also have a look at these data lines as well. And I've done this actually, and I know that they're all working. So here's the waveform for DB1, and I mean you can see that there's a mass of data on there. It's working absolutely fine. Now if I turn down the time base on the scope, you can still see that the data's there. And I'm going to turn it down really slow so it goes into scan mode. And you can see that DB1 has pulses of information. Now, this is 100 milliseconds. About every 200 milliseconds. So, in fact, the microcontroller is only writing to the LCD about five times a second. Let's just turn the time base down once again. 200 milliseconds per division, about five times a second. So, the screen refresh rate on the scope's LCD, that's the Banger scope, the one down here that you can't see at the moment, is about five hertz. Now this scope has four push buttons. They're labeled OK, plus, minus, and select. Watch what happens to that trace when I press the plus and minus buttons. So here's the scope trace um, at 100 milliseconds per division. So it's about 200 milliseconds between each data pulse. I'm gonna press the plus button now. And you can see that the data is now being written to the LCD at twice the rate. Let's press it again. Twice the rate again. So obviously what's happening here is the plus and minus buttons are the time-based control. 
And by increasing the speed of the time base, you can actually see on the LCD's data lines that data is being written to the scope more quickly. Now press it again, and it seems that that's about the maximum rate it writes to the scope, to the LCD, I mean. And that makes sense because there's no point writing beyond a certain speed because the human eye will never see it. Let's press the minus key. So that's now halved in frequency, halved again, halved again, and now it's so slow that I'm going to have to speed up the scope, no, slow down the scope so that we can see it. So that's now 500 milliseconds per division, or one second per two divisions. It's writing to the LCD of this oscilloscope really, really slowly. Now I've put the scope on to uh, all four data lines of this LCD header and I'm actually measuring them on the top. So it's actually on the LCD PCB itself. I'm not even measuring them down on the bottom PCB. And we have similar activity on DB1, 3, 5, 7, 0, 2, 4 and 6. So all the data outputs from the microcontroller are working and are active. Now what about these signals up here? Chip select write, uh, register select, and read. Now these are NCS, NWR, so I imagine it means not chip select, so it's probably active low, it would normally be high. Uh, active low chip select, active low write, uh, active low read, and register select, which doesn't have an N by it. Let's take a look at those. And at first I thought, well, there's nothing there, but in fact, if I tweak the time base, start speeding this up, you get these very occasional pulses. So in fact, it is altering the register select line. Now I imagine uh, 1 is a control register and 0 is a data register or the other way around or something like that. But that's an active signal. It's getting to the LCD printed circuit board. That line coming out of the microcontroller is absolutely working. It's difficult to get the scope to trigger on it sometimes. Let's just tweak that back. But it's definitely there. The register select line is operating. So one of the easiest ones to get to is register select, which is there on pin 8. Let's see what's going on on the scope. Now getting my scope probe on these left-hand row of pins is much more difficult because they're much less accessible. But I've just managed to get it to hold on to pin 9 for the moment. Let's check that one out. So pin 9 is the LCD write pin, and there are occasional bursts of data on the write pin. It's very difficult to get the scope to trigger, but there they are. Let's go into scan mode again. Now they're very short, so they don't always show up, but there's one there. Speed that up. They're more frequent than they appear, but they're very short in duration, so they often don't trigger the scope. But if I speed this up, we can see that there are bursts of activity. It's very difficult to get them to sync, yet, sync up. Actually, it probably helps if my trigger level was a bit higher, wouldn't it? Yes, that does help. So there they are. There are the uh, digital pulses on pin 9, which is the right pin. The LCD is definitely being written to. And I've been through every relevant signal on this circuit diagram. Uh, register select, write, chip select. Now read, I can't see anything on, but that makes sense because you wouldn't never need to read from the LCD, possibly once right at the beginning of the program, and there's no way I'd ever capture that. Um, so that's inactive. These LED ones, anodes and cathodes, I'm not too bothered about because I've got uh, the LEDs illuminating on the on the display. Uh, all eight of these data lines have activity on them. And now I also have VGen coming out of the microcontroller at all uh, as well. I'm absolutely convinced that the microcontroller is absolutely fine. All its signals are working correctly. It's the LCD that's failed. 99% convinced of that. Now, I have had a response from Banggood um, about the problem here. Uh, after we checked um, your video, this is my video, my first video. Uh, you can test V minus voltage first, should be about minus 8.1, minus 
my 5 volt, my 3.3, AV is lower than normal. Uh, I'm only getting 0.67 minus 5 is what it should be. Now they say, can you change the power supply and retest AV minus? Hope that helps. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, okay, so what he's suggesting is that possibly my power bank is putting out nasties and I should use a different 9 volt power supply. So I made up this, it's a little 9 volt uh, battery, plugs into the other connector up here and I went through all the tests again, it makes absolutely no difference. There's nothing wrong with using the power bank to uh, provide power for this thing, it doesn't help to use a 9 volt battery. So as I say, I'm absolutely convinced now that it's the LCD that's wrong. It's receiving all the signals and power levels that it should be receiving. Um, this logo here is JYE Tech's logo. It's on up here, the DSO138 digital oscilloscope. There's the logo. It's also on the LCD board. Um, let's just take a look at it on the uh, printout. Uh, here's the logo down here. So this is JYE Tech's own LCD printed circuit board. So I'm going to have to go back to Banggood and say, can you send me uh, a new LCD? I'm absolutely convinced that's the problem. Let's just press reset again. Microcontroller boots up, double flash, LCD does nothing. Push down on the chip area. The chip for the LCD is up here under this little bit of uh, sticky tape. I've pressed it and I've prodded it and I've moved it. Incidentally, these offset posts, which I soldered in upside down, are not actually connected to anything. They're purely physical supports. All the connections are on this uh, two row connector over here. I'm fairly certain it's the LCD. I'm gonna ask Banggood for a new one and we'll see what happens. Cheerio.